Good afternoon, everyone. Today, a short video to give you my take, my point of view of the current situation of the COVID-19 and its consequences in Switzerland, and my take on why the government is still really slow, way too slow to take proper action. And basically, I'm a trained economist and a statistician, so I will use those two angles to answer the question I just asked. So first thing, let's just see, look at the number. And basically, I think one thing that puzzles governments and politicians, but definitely not experts, because I, I had the opportunity to talk with many professors from different fields during this week. And even on Monday, Tuesday, every expert was sure of what was happening. And it was already too late. And today I'm sitting here, Friday, I just taught this morning to a hundred students in a room. I just crossed the street city and saw thousands of people everywhere in cafe, shopping. And, and I think this is really grave. I think that the government is already way too slow. And here is the first angle. I think that they misunderstand the math. And even if every expert explains them, I mean, they don't understand the speed of what is an exponential curve, which is the, the function that follows this epidemic. So let's see that together and why it's potentially tricky, but it doesn't seem that crazy to me. So I've worked uh, yesterday evening on the data and I have a few graphs to show you. So here is the first graph that I guess the politicians look at and they are like this is fine the thing is with an exponential it's exactly this this is fine it's too late this is basically the two stage and here we are politician might think this is fine and that's why everything still remains open now but actually if you understand the math it's too late already and for several reasons that i will explain but first clearly we look at this picture and we are like, okay, we can see the, the Switzerland following a path way slower than Italy. We are on something relatively flat, so we kind of safe. Now, let me just do a better comparison. I will align, put all the, the two uh, lines here, where the day zero will represent the day of the first case in both countries. And this is the graph. So we can see that actually the epidemic started faster in Switzerland. And now let's try, I, I kept those data, I did some prediction. So I, I predicted the shape, estimated the shape of the, the, this function for Switzerland, the speed at which it was going up. And then I compared that to the situation in Italy as of today. Meaning if we look in two weeks from now, in Switzerland, so basically the situation where Italy is today, we can see here the dashed line will be Switzerland in two weeks. More than 80,000 reported cases of people sick. And as you most certainly know, these and those predictions that I've made are based on the reported cases. And not everybody is tested and actually given everything that I've read those days yesterday during the night it seems that there are actually the true cases compared to the one reported are between 12 times larger to a hundred times larger so as of today there is 858 cases reported in Switzerland and eight deaths and if we multiply this by 12 or 100, it leads to actually in Switzerland right now, there is between 100,000 persons sick and more than half a million. As the incubation time for the COVID-19 is long, it might be two weeks. Basically, we don't perceive those people that are sick. They are not tested and they maybe didn't have, don't have even symptoms right now. But actually, when even if we shut 
So let's make a thought experiment. If we shut everything down right now, as of today, as I am speaking in Switzerland, there are currently between 100,000 and more than half a million people sick in Switzerland. In the following weeks, even if nobody else anymore is contaminated, that will lead to approximately between a thousand and more than five thousand deaths. So if the decision is taken right now and nobody moves, between a thousand and five thousand deaths. That would be the realistic prediction. And again, this, is, this remains rather low because actually the numbers I took is 1% death rate. But this is when the medical system is not overwhelmed. When the medical system is overwhelmed, what we observe in other countries in comparative, comparative situations is that the death rate jumps from 1% to 3 or 5%. So up to five times the number I've gave you. So if we take the worst scenario, which is completely realistic, we can expect, even if everything is shut down right now, 525,000 death, thousands, 25,000 deaths in total in Switzerland. And the thing is, if you take the action, the earlier you take the action, the more impact it has. And here, one last graph where I compare the curve of Switzerland, uh, the, the Switzerland, Italy, and Singapore for the first 25 days. And what we can see is that actually... And the thing is, the earlier you act, the better the results, and drastically better because of this curvature of, of logarithmic function. So if we look at this and we compare not only Italy and Switzerland, but now we add Singapore, who took drastic measures at the very beginning of the epidemic. Here is the difference. Basically, Singapore is just another order of magnitude below Switzerland and Italy. And each hour we lose, each day we lose, will completely and continue to make this difference larger and the case worse for Switzerland. Now, my view as an economist, why is everything remains open in Switzerland? This actually completely puzzles me because, again, since Monday and I guess even earlier, but since this week, every expert, every per person who is educated in statistics, in math or in specifically in the, those fields, understood that there was no doubt. We were on an exponential curve. The beginning was really bad and we have to stop right now. And I'm sitting here as of Friday. I taught classes to 100 students and it remains the same situation. Nothing drastic has been decided by the government. And my understanding again is that Potentially, they fail to understand or to compare well cost and benefits. They don't want to pay the short cost term to stop everything right now for a reasonable amount of time. They try to postpone, to reduce the potential recession that will inevitably arrive. But actually, the thing is, each day or each hour we wait will make this recession larger and larger. So it's way better to stop right now for a shorter amount of time rather than continuing and making this, this gap, this recession potential and the number of deaths clearly larger terms. But it seems that policymakers in that case fail to understand those differences and to compute well or balance well cost benefits. And that's the results. So basically they prefer to leave the ski station open let the people go skiing and then this summer explain i don't know how to the to the population that and the families who will have to bury their grandparents uh, that they decided to postpone a bit because they were not sure or because they wanted the economic activity to continue for the benefit of everyone well this is already too late so i really hope that in the next few hours I will hear the decision that everything is shut down in Switzerland. If not, 
take the conclusion you want from this video. And I hope this has been useful and uh, I'm looking forward to discussing with you. So feel free to comment below and take care everyone. I'm looking forward uh, discussing with you in the future scientific research and economics. Bye.